Hello and welcome. And today we're going to be talking to Kate Lysett, who has got her exhibition, Tall Trees and Warm Stone. Can you tell the listeners a little bit about your exhibition and the stories behind your paintings? The exhibition is called Tall Trees and Warm Stone, and the exhibition is at least 18 months worth of work. It's a collection of 14 new paintings, and I've chosen to talk about five of them five of them that have particular stories behind. The first one is Bridge Lanes, and I've chosen this one to start with because this was the one that gave the theme to the whole exhibition. I was talking to a gentleman at Open Studios last year, and I showed him some of the work I had started, and he said, I really like your work because you capture, you capture the warmth of the stone. And that was very important, and it made me think of, about the way I contrast colours to the way I feel about the town and what it's like to live here. And Bridge Lanes, is, it's the street on which I live, and I live on what I thought was the bright side of the road. It's a very sunny house, my house. And on the opposite side of the road, it's on a main road, the houses look small and they look very dark. And I think you always feel quite sorry for the people who live in these small, dark houses. But if you walk up Horsehold Road then you see the backs of these supposedly dark houses, and they're huge. They're often about five stories high. They're permanently in the sunshine at the back of the house, and they all have two or even three stories below the level of the road. So they have courtyards that are quiet and terraced gardens that lead down towards the river. When I stood on Horsehold Road and took the drawing, I was trying to capture the warmth and the colour in the stone, and the way the gardens terraced down towards the river, and the way the trees were framed by the buildings. And on this particular day, it was a bright, cold day, but people had, had hung loads of washing out, which seemed to link the terrace of houses together. The next two paintings are called Emily's Garden and Nesting Birds, and they're also on Bridge Lanes. And I painted them at the same time, and they're basically directly at the back of my house. My house is a very old house. It, it predates industrial Hebden Bridge. It's an old pub. It was built in about 1750. So there's a lot of history attached to it. And in the back of my garden, there is the remains of an old mill chimney. There's about a third of it left, and it's very tall, but it used to be one of the tallest chimneys in Hebden Bridge. And there's a channel that runs underneath the road where there used to be a huge factory opposite. So my house used to be very dark and surrounded by mills. And the remains of the chimney is out the back, and the chimney is now completely covered in ivy. You can hardly see it. And the ivy is full of nests of birds. So in the summer, I get woken up by, by the birds. And we've, we've found nests up there when we've been cutting back the ivy in the autumn. Bridge Lanes used to be a very, very built-up area. There were many rows of houses behind me and now it's just it's just empty land it's just full of trees but it used to be full of back-to-backs and it was a very run-down area and it was cleared as part of the slum clearance in the late 50s I think and it was all going to be redeveloped um, and the redevelopment never came underneath my garden which my garden is higher than the roof of my house is one of the old main roads is the old high street so underneath my grass is um is a cobbled road and my next door neighbor excavated the land at the back of her house and uncovered the shells of of two old buildings i think one of which was a baker's and one of which was a cobbler's and the cobbler's which is at the upper level there's a big old stone fireplace and have, they have bonfires in it in the summer They've built beautiful little sheltered gardens, sheltered courtyard gardens in the remains of the shells of these houses. First thing in the morning, the gardens are in the shade and the sun lights up the streets above. So in these two paintings, there's a great feeling of contrast with the, the cold stone of the chimney in Nesting Birds and the cold stone of Emily's garden. So it's like a hidden world that you're discovering. Yeah, uh, yeah, in the back of my garden and, and the upstairs garden and the street behind and in Emily's garden, there are things like, if you look for them, there's, there's bricked up windows and bricked up fireplaces and there's some holes in the wall that are full of old beer bottles and there's a dry stone wall at the top with a millstone in the bottom, which is there if you know where to look to it. So it's 
pieces of history are hidden in the layers. And I think that's where layers come into these particular paintings. There's little pieces of history, little pieces of architectural detail that are hidden, which I've turned into patterns in the way that I do, but, you know, but they're there. And in, each, in the one that's called Emily's Garden, I've, I've done things like use lettering in places. There's Bridge Lanes is, is written down in one of the stones because I liked the idea that that Bridge Lanes is gone, but the remains are still there. It's, I suppose, in a way, it's, it's like buried treasure. Absolutely. So it's remembered within Nesting Birds and Emily's Garden. It's, it's kind of within it. It's, it's really nice. I'm very attached to the history and finding more about the history. And the neighbours, when they dug out the gardens, they found things to do with, with it being a cobbler's. They found old, old lasts for making the shoes. How is the structure hidden? I don't know. It was dug out before I got there. You can see the visible signs of it from outside the garden. Yes. You can see you can see the window frames. Yes. I'm guessing it was just filled in with rocks and earth and hardcore, really, from when they knocked all the bridge lanes down. That's absolutely fascinating. It's an amazing place. It's yeah, and you live there. I know. Wow. The next piece I want to talk about is Studley Pike, which is one of the bigger paintings in the exhibition. And I painted it really for my daughter Hattie, who was taken on a walk up there in autumn last year, and it made such an impression on her that she then sought out images of Studley Pike in trails around town and, and photographs and things, and she kept asking if I'd ever painted it. And I have painted it. It's in a, it's in a tile in another painting, but that wasn't good enough. So we all went up on a, a walk on Boxing Day, to Studley Pike. To be honest, I'd never been before. So it was Hattie's thing. She was taking us all on an adventure. And it was a freezing cold day. And when we got right up to the top to Studley Pike, you, you can go into it. It's an old memorial. It was built to commemorate the end of the Crimean War. So it, it's vast. I didn't really realise how big it was until we got up to the top. It's dark, it's austere, it's gloomy. And you can go up a spiral staircase inside it to to an, a viewing gallery. You can walk all the way around it, but the staircase inside is, is absolutely pitch black, which I didn't like. She was much braver than me. Um, I held on to some strange man in front of me and hope he didn't mind. And then we were completely windblown at the top and we quickly came down again. And it was on the walk back down that we walked past this little collection of um, old farm buildings. They seemed to be largely derelict, but they were very stark and very dark against the, against the hill that Studley Pike was on. And at this point, Studley Pike was lit by quite watery sunshine. But the buildings were quite black and were framing bare winter trees. So it was very striking. It was a very striking image. And I took some photographs and did some very quick drawings in the cold on the way down and then painted it when I got home. So it was painted largely for Hattie because Studley Pike, it, it really captivated her. Studies for Trees is, it's a one-off piece. When I was little, my mum used to have an antique shop and she had a, a big collection of print trays. And my little sister and I were given one each and we used to keep our treasures in there. And my treasures were things like fossils and seashells and oh, sweet papers and whimsies and little things. I'm a great collector of little treasures and I always have been. And I found this lovely print tray and it is a particularly lovely one and decided I wanted to do a bit more treasure collecting. Now I, I always have a sketchbook and I, I'm always jotting down particularly nice shapes or colours or, or little tile designs that I, that I find. And I decided it would be nice to use this print tray and do an illustration for for every single compartment. I must have started it. It's, it's about a year's worth of, of treasure collecting, this. So I used to just take a notebook out or take these little pieces of, of papers that I'd... I, I, um, I treated the papers with, with colours and ink, so I had an, an interesting base to work with. And I, I took them out to the park and I took them out to the river and I'd, I'd just sit there and, and paint a tree or find a tree with birds in or or find leaves and make tile patterns out of them. So some of them were done outside, some of them were done at home. And gradually this tray got filled up and the, the tiles got swapped around and swapped around. And then eventually I had to commit and, and stick them all down, which was 
quite a wrench. It's a very personal piece because I know this is how my brain works. This is how I collect ideas. Paintings are often a, a patchwork of ideas. And I'm particularly interested with, with things like trees. I'm always looking for the way that different artists interpret them. Children's books like Errol Lacane, which I loved when I was little and I now read to Hattie all the time. I, I love his trees and I love the trees that Anna Pugh paints and Michael Morgan and very famous people like Klimt and Egon Schiel. And everybody tackles them in such a different way. So some of them are very stylized, all of them are very colourful, none of them are particularly literal interpretation. But it was, it was just coming at it from, from all avenues and just collecting ideas and interpretations. Did you have a relationship with trees when you were little? I grew up in very rural Suffolk, so I played in the woods a lot. So possibly. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm always seeking out beautiful shapes. Some, there's a, there's a, a roundabout in Halifax, and in the winter, there's a tree in the middle of the roundabout that is a very, very pleasing shape. And I always notice that, and I wonder if I'm the only person that has. But that's in there somewhere. It's in one of the tiles. I think trees are quite characterful anyway, aren't they? They've got like a history to them they've got roots and I think that does appear in in your work quite a lot the kind of history of things and is that what appeals to you by painting the trees possibly when I was growing up in Suffolk there was a, a very big tree a huge beech tree that used we used to pass on the way to school and in the way that beech trees often do this beech tree had eyes on it patterns of eyes and we used to call it the cyclops and it was a it was a mark it was a landmark on the way to school so, yes, so I suppose that's a very important tree in my life. And the one on the roundabout in Halifax is a very important tree. A huge willow tree in a friend's garden. The friend's house was called Willow House. And this willow tree blew over in the hurricane in 1988. And it pulled up half the road with it. So, yes, I suppose trees were very significant where I grew up. What is your website? I have a website at katelysett.co.uk and all the new work is listed in my portfolio and featured on the news page along with the stories behind all 14 new pieces. Thank you so much. Thank you. The exhibition Tall Trees and Warm Stone will be at the Hart Gallery in Hebden Bridge until July.